in modern construction, plumbers put the absolute minimum of shut-off valves and other devices on your modern hot water system in accordance with the code. That doesn't always serve the purpose of the homeowner. So the homeowner finds himself in a situation where he needs to add some piece of plumbing, whether it be a shut-off valve or another zone of heat. This is last time I'm going to do it yourself home improvement plus. We're going to demonstrate today how to solder standard copper pipe. This is a standard piece of half inch copper water pipe used in most homes. Although in modern homes a great deal of the copper is being replaced by plastic. But if your home is more than 10 years old it's probably nearly all copper pipe. To begin with there are a few tools you need to be able to effectively solder a piece of copper pipe. Okay, one is you need a torch. This is probably one of the best torches on the market. It can be uh, purchased at any plumbing supply store or home improvement supply center. This is a benzomatic map gas. Map gas burns approximately 2,000 degrees, which is several hundred degrees hotter than regular, a regular propane torch. And it's ideal for soldering pipe because it heats very quickly. Another tool you need, you need a cutting device to cut the pipe. This is a standard pipe cutter, cut up to three quarters of an inch, it's just a matter of clamping it on, rotating it, and the pipe will fall off. And if you do not have one of these, you can do the same thing with a hacksaw. But in either case, after it's cut off, the end must be cleaned so the fitting will fit smoothly in place, such as that there. Okay. To clean the fitting, you either can use an emery cloth or sandpaper and clean the fitting till it actually shines, outside and inside. If the, if the fitting is not thoroughly clean, the solder will not adhere to it. Another item you need, you need solder and flux. Well, solder and flux is basically the glue that the solder needs to stick to the pipe. So we apply flux to approximately a half inch of the pipe, and we say half inch because that's how far the fitting will pass over the end of the pipe. We apply the flex in a smooth manner all the way around the pipe, both on the, on the pipe and the fitting that it's going into. The fins come in all different types of sizes and shapes and forms. This is a standard 90 degree fitting. There's also straight fittings for adding additional pipe and length. There's 45 degree fittings. Just about any combination you can imagine is available at Plum and Supply Store. And now that we've applied the solder paste to the pipe and the fitting, we put them together. This will go into the fitting a half inch. And we have a nice smooth loose So we're ready to solder them. What we're going to do is heat, heat the connection and apply the solder so it'll be absorbed into the small void that's between the pipe and the fit. If you've never used a um, soldering torch, I would advise you to um, look at the safety precautions that come with the torch. It's a little loud, but it's very effective. hot, you do not need to continue to apply heat. Just take the solder, wipe it all the way around the joint, and after it cools a moment or two, wipe it with a damp rag. What the wiping it does is not just cool it, but it also wipes off the excess solder 
from the fitting itself. If there's a little bit of excess solder still on it, you can wipe the fitting off using your emery cloth or a fine sandpaper. If you're soldering in an area where the fitting and the pipe is close to the wood structure or any other combustible structure, it's, I would strongly recommend you use a piece of sheet metal behind the item which you're going to be soldering so it absorbs the heat and you reduce the possibility of starting a fire. Another safety item you want to keep in mind, depending on how far away your hands are from the fitting, you might want to wear gloves to avoid getting burnt. That's all the risks of soldering copper pipes. With a little bit of practice, you'll be able to solder just about any type of fitting necessary to do the job. For more information on do-it-yourself home improvement, take a look at our website at Do-It-Yourself Home Improvement Plus.